Well, hey everybody, John Rentlin here, and this is part two of my top 50 least favorite horror movies of the last 25 years. And credit, once again, goes to Abby BX on Twitter for the inspiration for this. Um, always enjoy talking to her, enjoy talking to anybody else that likes to discuss movies with me, especially the horror genre, as you know. I love the horror genre, though I admit that there are probably movies I forgot on this list, and even on my favorites list that will be coming up sometime later. Um, I'm sure I forgot, you know, some of my favorites and some of my least favorites, and leave your thoughts in the comments. Leave your picks, and if you haven't seen part one, there is a link up here. Feel free to check that out, and make sure that you <coughs> leave your comments there, and leave your comments here. I would love to hear from you guys, but let's get on with this. Since I did 50 through 23, this is probably going to be a little bit less, but let's get on with it. Talking about 2018's Truth or Dare at number 22, Lucy Hale, who is 32, or 33 by this point, but was 32 at the time, is playing a college student. Lucy Hale looks great, don't get me wrong. She looks she looks young. She looks about 10 years younger than she than her actual age. And she can play a college student easily. But if you know the ages of a lot of these of a lot of these people playing the students, it's kind of silly because they're in their late 20s or early 30s playing college students. But whatever, that's been going on for years and years and years in the horror movie uh, you know, franchises and in the horror movie genre. So what the fuck's it really matter? But in this, <clears throat> they're celebrating a college, you know, spring break by going, you know, south of the border and celebrating. And they listen to re really bad dubstep music. And Lucy Hale gets invited by this one guy to this, like, ancient chapel, castle thing, whatever, <clears throat> this rundown area, to play a version of Truth or Dare. But in this one, you have to tell the truth or you die. You have to do the dare or you die. But you can't just keep telling the truth or asking the truth over and over and over, asking for truth, and just embarrass yourself. Nope. Eventually, they come up with a rule, wait a second, people could just keep saying truths and truths and truths, so we have to come up with a game where, nope, you have to do true truths, and then the next person has to do a dare. So, like, true truth, and then person has to do a dare, and then so on and so forth and everything. Nobody knew what the fuck they were doing. The filmmakers, the writers, nobody knew. The studio didn't know. The studio didn't care. <laughs> and Lucy Hale ends up saying in the beginning of the movie, like, you know, a question, if you were asked to sacrifice your friends and save the world, uh, would you do it? And she would sacrifice her friends to save the world because she's all about saving the world and helping out. She has this blog where she talks about, you know, wanting to help people and everything. And then in the end of this, after all this death has happened, she decides to send out this YouTube video making everybody who watches it part of this game playing Truth or Dare. So basically she saves herself and her friend, her one remaining friend, and then poisons the whole goddamn world or whatever. So, so much for being such a good, kind-hearted person or whatever. But then again... Good decisions in horror movies have never been exactly the best thing. And don't get, don't get me wrong, if people didn't make bad decisions in horror movies, we would not have horror movies at all of any variety, especially slashers or especially stuff where ghosts and whatever are around. But yeah, truth or dare, absolute shit, and everybody gets this weird, stupid, derpy grin on their face. Or, you know, mm, we, they get this weird thing on their face whenever they do, whenever, you know, they don't do the dare or do the truth, or fuck it, it's bad, it's bad, you know it, and I did a review of it last year, check out the playlist I'll put at the end of this video. <laughs> and at number 21, the 1998 remake, shot for shot remake by Gus Van Sant of Psycho. It had <laughs> Vince Vaughn playing the Norman Bates character, it had Anne Hayes in it, she was fine, it had William H. Macy, he was fine, this movie did not need to exist, it was a painfully, probably the most painfully unnecessary remake ever. I fucking hated this movie. And I, I mean, I really hated this. Because it was a movie that is so iconic that if you're going to remake it, you have to make it your own. They did not do that. They made it really, really bad in this. And I could not believe that they made it so fucking shit. I mean, I actually can. I just can't believe this movie exists. And Vince Vaughn, sorry, cannot do serious acting. Or if he can... He can't do it here. It was bad. It was bad. You know it. And my God, let's just move on from something to something good. It was 2000. <coughs> it was 2005's An American Haunting. It has Donald Sutherland, Sissy Spacek, and is apparently the only known case of a spirit causing the death of a man. It goes back to like, <coughs> you know, the 18th, 19th century and has implied incest and hauntings and then tells a story in the present day of like these hauntings happening and... Why were Donald Sutherland and Sissy Spacek in this? Like, really? Why were they in this? And this movie, I'm sure, had a good idea to it, but just was not good at all. It was <coughs> jumbled, messy, the time 
the time, you know, travel thing. Well, not time travel, but just the jumping back and forth between centuries or between time periods, which is not a good idea. It wasn't scary. It really, really wasn't scary. It just was, ugh. It was so goddamn bad. I almost put Exorcist the Beginning on here, and then I realized that movie was bad, but it just wasn't... It, it wasn't worth really talking about. <clears throat> it doesn't even crack the top 50. How bad is that? Oh, Blood Rain doesn't even make it on here. That's how bad, you know, some of the horror movies have been for the last, like, you know, 25 years. Blood Rain, that was absolute shit. That, you know, Cristiano Loken, who actually wasn't all that bad in this movie, or wasn't all that bad <clears throat> in that movie, it didn't even make it on here. As shit as it was. So we go to number 19, House of the Dead. Uva Bowl or Uva Bowl or, you know, shit bowl is what they might as well call him. And apparently he doesn't like when people criticize his work. So who the fuck cares what that dumb hack has to say? I mean, Grant, I'm just a fan, whatever. He somehow keeps making movies, churning these out, doing these. And I don't understand why. I don't understand how. Because he has yet to make one movie that is even competent. <laughs> In the Name of the King, A Dungeon Siege Tale. House of the Dead, Alone in the Dark, Blood Rain. Uh, God, what the fuck else did he do? He had a bunch of other movies or whatever. I can't think of Postal. I think he did a Postal movie, which I saw, which was shit. I didn't like Postal games anyway, but he somehow made me feel bad for the fact the Postal games got shit on. Yeah, House of the Dead, though, it's zombies. It's based on the shoot 'em up you know, that was from, that, that was like, you know, in the art, popular in the arcades in the 90s and early 2000s. <laughs> and there was even... Video game footage interspliced in among, you know, the the cuts. I'm not kidding. They interspliced video game footage. The video game footage, by the way, they had way more animated characters and more fleshed out characters. Yes, fleshed out. Zombies, do you see what they did there? More fleshed out characters than anything in this movie. And there was this thing put on by Sega, this party on this island, Sega, because Sega made the games. Yeah, if, if you can sit through this movie and not laugh at it, then you're a better person than I am. There were zombies even doing like you know even doing running it wasn't quite as bad as uh <coughs> creatures springing like they did in the name of the king a dungeon siege tale but yeah zombie the zombie effects this one zombie is supposed to be the super zombie that's controlling everybody it just it was why why did this happen the acting was shit <coughs> nothing was good and the video game stuff being spliced in did i mention how bad that was uh, then we go to, oh boy, another Uwe Bowl or Uva Bowl or whatever the fuck his name is. Alone in the Dark 2005. That is at the number 18 spot. Uh, Tara Reed being some kind of scientist and smart person. I'm sure that Tara Reed has a brain in her skull. Not that you would know by some of the career choices she's made. <clears throat> and I'm sure she's a nice person. But trying to portray her as somebody really, really smart, it just didn't work. It wasn't as bad as trying to promote Denise Richards as a nuclear, you know, as, as somebody smart in a nuclear field in one of the Bond movies. But this was pretty bad. And it had Steven Dorff in it, and it had... <clears throat> it wasn't as bad as, as the relaunched uh, Alone in the Dark video games they would do a little bit later, but most of it was, like, so freaking dark, and there were these weird creatures. And, I mean, yes, I know it's called Alone in the Dark, but then there's all this gunfire, and there's all this shit, and the sets looked like some of the most canned green screen bullshit that was... Just so goddamn bad. <clears throat> you didn't give two shits about any of the goddamn characters. And it was either too well lit or it was either too dark. You didn't, you either were blinded by shit that was going on or you were, or you were darkened to the point where you were like having to squint and everything to see if you could actually spot anything or maybe get a flashlight out and flash it at the screen. And apparently only flashlights exist in that size, but it was just bad. It was just a bad goddamn movie. And I mean, not that Alone in the Dark was ever actually anything good. But fucking Christ, they really did a disservice to what little bit was good in one of the in the first video game, and then <coughs> the second and the third were eh. yeah, Alone in the Dark was shit. He, Uwe Boll should not be allowed to make any more movies. And then we go to number seventeen, two thousand twelve, The Haunting of Whaley House. Okay, so a girl gets this job, you know, being a tour guide for this haunted house, which during the day apparently none of these ghosts bother anybody. Apparently the ghosts are just like yeah, it's cool, you know, we're not gonna bother anybody. There's rules. No, we can't disrupt them during the day. We can only disrupt people at night. Apparently a code among ghosts. <clears throat> but she gets this job. After her first day or two, I think even her first day on the job, uh, her friends of hers are like, well, hey, you have keys to the house. Let's go in there and see how haunted it really fucking is, even though you're not supposed to be in there at night. 
Well, they go in there, they get trapped, it's all set finally, it's all just set in that location and everything, and there's <clears throat> stupid deaths, stupid characters, the girl, the main girl, eventually dies, and she's yelling or whatever, even though she can't be heard, that she's alive, and that you know, she's not actually alive, and now she's trapped in the house, all because she didn't want to be smart, and boy, I hated this movie, it's not the worst haunting movie that I'm going to talk about, and somebody probably knows what I'm talking about here. Don't worry, I'm going to discuss that. But yeah, <clears throat> The Haunting of Whaley House. I remember watching it just being so irritated by it. Like, I'm just like, you know, and there were a couple, one, there were a couple pretty girls in the cast, but it's like the cast wasn't even the issue. It just was every decision that was made where it's like, why would you make that decision? It's not even like something where it's like, I panicked and I made the wrong decision. No, even with the benefit of hindsight, even without having the benefit of hindsight, even without possessing the ability to do anything other than, like, ha have a half lobotomized brain. Why in the world would you make that decision? <clears throat> and I was asked multiple times in this movie. And then everybody dies, and, you know, everything's celebrated, because the end credits roll, and we don't have to watch this shit again. We then go to number 16, 2014's The Devil's Do. Yikes, is all I can say. More, found, more you know, stupid, you know, first camera footage bullshit and bad stuff, and if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, Christ, this movie was bad. It was about, uh, to me, it's like this and The Exorcism of Emily Rose were just, were, were like about equal, so I'm throwing The Exorcism of Emily Rose on here. So that was another first-person camera thing about a girl trying to be saved, and yeah, and that was bad. Devil's Do was bad. Let's just say this. If you're going to do any kind of first-person camera stuff, whatever, you have to do better than this. And Devil's Do had a somewhat interesting concept and it just got completely butchered and if you've seen the movie you know exactly what I'm talking about it just got all butchered it got all destroyed and it's like why in the world is this happening why would you make these decisions as I ask multiple times in this list <clears throat> so yeah throwing both those on there and then 2003's fear.com at number 15 Stephen Dorff started in a lot of shit uh this and Gothica which had Halle Berry in it were really, really bad, and were right around the same time as each other. I think Gothica came a little bit later. But both of them were just movies that were just... these. They were these horror movies that probably sat on the shelf for like about a year or two, and the studio said, well, you know, we spent money on it. We're not happy with it, but let's shove it out there, and then maybe we'll make some money back. And Fear.com had to do with this site <laughs> that causes, of course, you know, the worst kind of shit to happen. You know, like, because, of course, it's like, you know, it's about killers and stuff like that. It's supposed to be the dark web and everything. And yes, I'm I'm going to throw unfriended the dark web and unfriended as honorable mentions in this part because <clears throat> both were absolute dog shit, though I don't even think deserved to be in the top 50 because as bad as they were, I knew they were going to be bad. But I'm going to throw them here as honorable mentions. Don't watch those either. Fear.com and Gothica were just two movies, <clears throat> two horror movies that were absolute shit. And one hundred and just one hundred percent rotten. And despite having decent leads in the roles, I don't understand why they had why they had to exist. I don't think the studios understood. I again think they just sat on the shelves for a while, and then people said, "Ah, fuck, let's just throw it in there." So now I'm going to throw another one on with this movie, Nurse. It's number at number fourteen, two thousand thirteen's um, <clears throat> edition of Nurse. I'm also going to throw Stay Alive. Nurse had um, I don't even know how to pronounce her name. Uh, but it had a girl that was obsessed with this one girl that got with her. That it is like the most obvious, like, I'm going to stalk you until you go out with me and I'm going to stalk you some more and I'm going to take over your life. And it tried to be this exploitation type movie. It even tried to be released. It was even released in 3D in the theaters, but <laughs> it was not good at all. It was not good. It it just, the deaths were bad. It was very obvious from the beginning this girl was freaking off her rocker. Why was she hired? Why were they, why'd they have her there? And all the people that could have stopped this didn't. And I didn't understand how in the world, oh, we're supposed to, we're supposed to, you know, cheer for the killer. Oh, I didn't cheer for the killer because I didn't give two shits about the goddamn killer. Nor did I give two shits about any of the other people in the goddamn movie. <laughs> but stay alive. A video game kills people. That's pretty much it. You have to complete the video game or you die. Really, that's about it. That's about it where we're going to stay alive. I'm just throwing that out there as an honorable mention. Number 13, 2006's All the Boys Love Mandy Lane. Well, this is back when Amber Heard uh, was not, you know, quite revealed as being a bit off her goddamn rocker. And, you know, 
maybe not the nicest person in the world and the victim like everybody thought she was, but who the fuck knows what the real story is. The bottom line is Amber Heard doesn't look good now. Um, this had to do with Mandy Lane. She's the girl that all the guys want, all the girls want, and they're at this party and bullshit starts happening. People start dying. And then they try to do this weird little twist ending where she's in on it, but then she kills a guy and she gets away with it or she doesn't get away with it. Do you really care? I didn't care. And I don't think anybody making this movie cared. And it was one of those that also tried to be an exploitation movie. But <clears throat> yeah, besides Amber Heard, you know, being like, you know, like the camera fixated on every, you know, part of her body and her face and making her the desirable one of all these people. I don't understand the appeal of this. I don't understand how anybody could have made this and said, yeah, that looks good. Let's put that out. Maybe it just got hacked to bits or whatever. And the studio was like, yeah, that looks good. Let's just put that out there. <clears throat> no, not good. All oh, the boys love Mandy Lane. The, the deaths were bad also. The acting was shit. Good God. Then we go to number 12. That is 2018 Man. <laughs> that about sums it up. There was a guy that did, ow, there was a guy that did a whole bunch of, you know, it, he shook his face around and everything. It was really bad special effects and he was making out with a girl. And yeah, Slender Man. Why in the world did Slender Man even exist? I mean, it was well after the whole Slender Man craze thing of like a real life stabbing happened <clears throat> because of this urban legend. And then they made this and they didn't even make it like found footage where they were like just looking for Slender Man and made it for cheap with, like, a handheld camera and everything and, like, a, a small budget to really make its money back. No, they tried to add layers to this lore and stuff like that, and it just wasn't good, and none of the acting was good, and the rules kept changing, and it was just, it, it was, a, this was another movie, if it wasn't at least sitting on the shelf for a year, I'd be absolutely amazed. It was <clears throat> pretty goddamn dog shit. Pretty, pretty shit. Why do these movies keep getting churned out? Probably because I go watch them in theaters and I'm I'm part of the problem. I need to stop being part of the problem, but I review stuff. And actually, this is the movie myself and the Derbinator reviewed. And boy, we had a lot of fun with the review, even if the movie wasn't all that good. Then we go to number 11, 2010's Atrocious. It was a found footage movie where I believe it was in Spain. It was a family that went to their vacation home that apparently had a creepy past. There was a maze, a well where a dog ended up dying. <coughs> And the mother went nuts and killed people. That's about how much I can tell you of what happened with this. Because the movie did not make a whole lot of sense. It was also only about a 75, 80 minute movie. And nothing happens for like the first 30 minutes. First 30 or 40 minutes. I mean like a lot of found footage movies. Like a lot of paranormal activity movies. This is like Spanish paranormal activity. Um, only just not as good. And even though I admit some of the paranormal activity movies weren't that good. Ghost Dimension, for one, could throw that on here if I wanted to. As much as I wanted to like it, it wasn't good. Um, though if they release all those on Blu-ray, and I'm talking in a Blu-ray box set, I will buy it because I'm a horror movie buff. Atrocious just was one of those where it's like, it, it was a very small cast. I think it was like a cast of maybe five, six people. Maybe, maybe eight, if you include the dog and like one extra. It was, it's just, you're watching and you're like, okay, like I figured, well, atrocious is an appropriate name because it was an absolute abomination. It was a piece of shit horror movie. And I didn't give two shits about any of the characters in it. <clears throat> but then we get to the top 10. And oh boy, this is where things are going to get a whole lot of fun. Now I reviewed this one, so I'm not going to get way too deep into it, but it's 2018's Possession of Hannah Grace. Uh, Shay Mitchell, who's from Pretty Little Liars, she's a dis discredited cop who takes a job being a night watch woman or night watch person, whatever the correct term is. Sometimes I don't know, but she gets a night watch job at a hospital and this body comes in that was the result that the girl died as a result of a botched exorcism. Well, it turns out the girl ain't exactly dead. She starts to heal herself and... <laughs> This demon, the devil, whatever, is looking for a new body to, you know, to be, to possess it. And the idea is, okay, well, you know, wonder, I wonder who the fuck's going to get possessed. There was maybe a cast of 10 people in this. In this big, giant hospital, there was the front desk person. There was a security guard that kept uh, flirting with Shane Mitchell, though she is pretty. I don't blame him. There was a person teaching her the job, a former partner, a former lover, there were a couple other cast members. This is a very small cast. And for a big building like this, you're like, 
No wonder bullshit keeps happening. I would imagine that if anybody got in there, they could have ransacked the place because there's about five people working in this place. Now, I know it's at night, but still, I know it's a morgue, so you don't expect anybody to get up and walk around. But really, like that few people <coughs> watching it, maybe you should have had a few more people watching it and had a couple have a couple priests come over and bless the goddamn room. Yeah, none of the deaths were good. It was, there was this really, really bad editing where suddenly this guy got thrown in to the fire along with like, you know, instead of the where they incinerate the bodies, he got thrown in and then Hannah Grace's body got thrown in. And then it was implied that like the devil may have possessed Shay Mitchell's character and it, it was not good. It was not good at all. <clears throat> but I did a full review if you really want to catch my full thoughts on it. And then we go to number nine as 2011's Apollo 18. More found footage bullshit. Where it's uh you know going it's going up into space and everything and it's two guys and then there's you know weird creatures on the moon or whatever as to why why did why wasn't this one space station or why isn't wasn't this one you know um person reacting or whatever they had to send up this other rocket oh it turns out that there are these weird moon rock creatures that are killing people <laughs> that step foot on the moon. Apparently, I missed that happening in 1969. Nice. Yes, I'm always going to react to 69. Nice. Whenever I say that, whenever I say that number, I'm going to stop saying that number. I must have missed that happening when when um, they did the whole landing on the moon before. When you know, when <laughs> when Armstrong did that. Yeah, I just uh, Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong. They must be spinning over in their graves. And just good God, watching this is like okay. You didn't give a shit about any of it. It wasn't atmospheric, which actually kind of makes sense as it was on the moon. <laughs> it looked like shit. And people were, you know, people were dying and no one gave a shit. No one gave a fucking shit at all. Like, why in the world was this happening? Why am I supposed to care about this? And for 80 minutes, I'm thinking, okay, you know, it's going to be actually pretty... It might be decent. It might be fun. And even when the shit started happening, it wasn't even it wasn't even like, oh, that's a good payoff. Or, oh, okay, I sat through this. This is a good payoff. <clears throat> nope, it wasn't. Another one that was like that that I'm throwing in on here was the movie Life. I hated the movie Life. I hated it so much. I hated the characters. I hated the acting. I hated the story. The fact that this creature that could have been killed multiple goddamn times. It was a it was an amoeba creature that eventually latched onto somebody and gained, gained life and everything. And it was a killer alien creature <clears throat> that could have killed a whole bunch of people and did kill a whole bunch of people and everybody that could have stopped it didn't stop it because they were too stupid and then eventually it got sent back down to earth despite not um you know originally supposed to be sent down to earth they were like oh we're going to send this space capsule away nope the creature takes over jake gyllenhaal yes jake gyllenhaal was in this and sends it down to earth and then it takes over the world seemingly i guess um it was not good it was not a good movie at all i hate it and i hate every character in it so Moving on from that, number eight, 2008's The Haunting, The Haunting, also, of Molly Hartley. Even if I had nothing against the cast in this movie, it's like, just, you're watching this and you're like, okay, why is Molly Hartley being haunted? Why should I care? Why do I care about any of these characters in this movie? Why are there no scares in this? Why am I still watching this? What in the world is going on? And the beginning credits hadn't even ended yet. Uh, <clears throat> shout out to Shadows Ariana 15, um... You know exactly, you know exactly what I'm talking about, because you hated this movie also. It was fucking terrible. It took place in a school. It was supposed to be like, oh, <clears throat> all this bad shit that keeps happening to people and, or that keeps happening to young women, we're supposed to feel bad or we're supposed to feel bad for somebody that's going to like, you know, suffer for, through this um, <clears throat> terrible haunting, this terrible tragedy. And you don't give a shit about any of the characters. You don't care. You don't fucking care one bit. And I fucking hated this movie. And now we move on to a movie that I clearly didn't hate because I only had it ranked one spot above, 2013's Willow Creek. A couple goes to investigate there's Bigfoot in the woods. There's a guy that tries to stop them, they get around him, they go there, and then Bigfoot eventually drags them away. After you hear a whole bunch of <coughs> noises, and it's more found footage bullshit, by the way. And Bobcat Goldthwait directed this, the comedian, the, the weird comedian guy, directed this. Apparently. I'm as shocked as I, I actually thought it was a joke. Maybe it is a joke. Maybe he didn't. Um but yeah. <clears throat> Willow Creek. 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 I hated it. I hate it. I hate it so goddamn much. This isn't like Wolf Creek. Wolf Creek actually wasn't that bad. 
Willow Creek was just terrible and you didn't care about any of the characters and eventually the two characters get dragged away. You don't see anything. It's a, it's like, oh, well, it's left open to interpretation. No, it's not. Give us some kind of payoff. You're just proving you didn't have a big, big enough goddamn budget to show any creatures. And it just, <laughs> ugh. I hate it. And I thought, it's like found footage movies again are hit and miss. This one wasn't even like entertaining and like, oh, great, you know, okay, maybe some fun stuff will happen. Nope. This is just 80, 90 minutes of fucking torture. And then we get to Real Torture, 2000's Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2 at number 6. Boy, they really wanted to, I think, originally make this just a goofy send-up of the first Blair Witch and all the lore and everything and how people bought into it and it turned out to be bullshit. Um, great marketing by the people that made the Blair Witch, don't get me wrong, or the Blair Witch Project. <clears throat> but this was supposed to be, I think, more comedic and a satire. And apparently... The studio said, no, it's got to be more horror. Throw some gore, throw some stuff like that, throw some tits in, and throw some hot women in there and <clears throat> make it more horror-like. So it ends up being this hodgepodge mishmash of like a whole bunch of stuff where these this group of teens, 20-somethings, whatever, are trying to uh, trying to do a reality show thing and investigate the Blair Witch, and weird shit happens at you know during this one night, and they have to figure out what happened to piece it together, and it makes no sense. It makes no goddamn sense. <clears throat> poorly edited, poorly shot. But again, I mean, I'm not even faulting the director because apparently it was studio interference, but this was one of the least scary horror movies I've ever goddamn seen, and it it was almost unwatchable. Speaking of unwatchable, number five, two, 2017's Mother. I covered this in a review, and I covered this in a recent hashtag Ask for Honesty, where I was asked what, what I thought of it. Briefly, I love Jennifer Lawrence, love Javier Bardem, I love um, Ed Harris, love Michelle Pfeiffer, love those four actors. Darren Aronofsky has directed a couple of movies I have liked. Um, <clears throat> the Wrestler, Black Swan is actually probably my favorite movie of his. This was a goddamn atrocity. It was a Mother Earth and God, Adam and Eve story, whatever. It was shit. It was over the top for the wrong reasons. The gore <clears throat> didn't need to happen. The visuals, while the movie looked good, it assaulted you, just beat you over the head with this, hey, do you get it? We're doing a religious story, and it wasn't very interesting at all. Yeah, I pretty much fucking hate it. I, I fucking hated Mother so much. And then we get some 2019's The Haunting of Sharon Tate at number four. Going to be very brief. Hilary Duff was in this. She was the best and worst part of it because she clearly didn't care, and I don't blame her, and nobody else was good in this movie. And it took a real life tragedy and tried to add a, you know, a weird, you know, haunting, you know, sp uh, supernatural thing to it, and it was bad. Check out my full review of it in the playlist again at the end of this video. Number three. The Apparition at number, at, you know, from 2012. It had Ashley Green in it and was about, remember the poster where hands are all over her and everything, you know, basically fanboys and fangirls with her. Yeah, that was the end of the movie. It was about, uh, it was about a creature that haunted people and took them over and beat you down with depression until you submitted, I guess. The movie made no sense. It was, I mean, Ashley Green looked good in it. I mean, but then again, I mean, that's a given. Ashley Green looks good. That was pretty much it. That was the main selling point of it. Though, as bad as the apparition was, it wasn't as bad as the movie Bug. It had Ashley Judd in it. I don't know why. It was set mostly in a house with two panicked people that believed that the government had planted bugs and planted chips and everything in there. And it was directed by the same guy that directed the, um, that directed The Exorcist. Yes, really, I'm not kidding. And made me made me want to puke. Not even not even because it was sickening, just because of how bad the goddamn movie was. So the bug and the apparition take the third spot here. This is more or less becoming a top sixty horror movies of the last twenty five years. But I'm throwing other ones that I thought of just on here because, quite frankly, I want to give you know some movies a really really good you know smacking because that's what they fucking deserve. And bug is really goddamn bad. And I do not understand how it got made. I do not understand why Ashley Judd was in it. But now we go to the last two movies. Number two is 2006, A Nightmare Man. A lady gets an African fertility mask. It doesn't look like it would turn on even the most, you know, um, e even the people with the worst goddamn kinks in the damn world. And it ends up taking her over. People end up dying, but then she's not possessed and she is possessed. And she raises people from the dead. And then it takes over this one woman after the other woman dies. And it just, it goes up her, it, it goes up her coochie. And basically ends up, uh, you know, taking her over, even though that, even though that was 
not necessarily implies how the how it would possess people, but whatever. It was one of the worst shot movies I've ever seen. <clears throat> it looked like shit. It was either too bright, too dark, and I know I said that about Low in the Dark, but for this, for a cheap movie, it it, it was an idea that I guess could have worked. But it might have worked more if they had just done it as part of an anthology. Like, if this had been, like, a 30-minute movie as part of, like, a two-hour anthology, I actually might have enjoyed it. I might have thought it might have been okay. But as a full-fledged movie with, you know, an African fertility mask, ha! Huh, that's exactly where what we got here. So now, but yeah, Nightmare Man was just, oh, God, I hate it. But I didn't hate it as much as number one. It was 2004, Satan's Little Helper. I hate everybody that was in this movie. I hate everybody that was behind the scenes in this movie. Now, once again, I just hate anything anybody that had anything to do with this as far as having anything to do with it. I don't wish anything bad to happen to him. I hated the cast. I hated the fact that this movie was funded, was written. I hated this movie so much. What the idea behind it is, is you have this kid playing a little video game, a knockoff like Game Boy Advance color video game that... It's about a guy. It's about a guy in a weird, goofy mask and everything, killing people. <laughs> and then because they're on this island, they live on this island, and you have, you know, you, you. It's a Halloween theme. You have this guy that dresses up like the killer, and the kid thinks it's part of the game. So even though this guy is going around knocking off people, he thinks it's a fun game. And even at one point, invites him in, and then realizes, oh wait, shit, he's putting my dad's intestines on a weird roller. <clears throat> Maybe this isn't a good thing. Maybe this guy is bad news. You never see the killer's face. It would have been better if you'd never seen anybody else's face in this goddamn movie. This fucking forsaken movie. I, goddamn, I hated this. I absolutely hated this movie. This movie made me want to puke. It made me want to find the studio that produced this. It made me want to find the studio, the people that funded this, and say to them, what the fuck were you actually thinking? Now, the director, the writer, whoever... <laughs> This may have originally been a much better concept, and as a comedy, it could have worked. The problem is, is no characters were, li were likable in this. It was fucking atrocious, and not the movie atrocious. Satan's Little Helper is probably, it, I would say, it's my least favorite horror movie of all time. If, if it isn't, it's right up there. This and Nightmare Man, you could trade off on both of those, but it's really goddamn bad. It just... I hate it, and if anybody happens to if anybody happened to like it, okay, fine. But I fucking hate it. So anyway, that's the end of the list. So thanks, guys. Thanks for uh, paying attention to the list. Thank you for paying attention to two parts. And once again, if you hadn't seen the first part, <coughs> the link it the link was up there. But anyway, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritlin. I will see you soon.